Hey guys, welcome back to more AFK Arena. In today's video, we're over on Reddit because Raku Day messaged me with this new uh, Hypergen investment type guide, if you will. Just recommendations. We'll go through some disclaimers in a sec. But Raku Day's done this for all the other factions. And now we've got the uh, Hypergens. And I love these things. They're really well put together. So we're going to take a look at it. Uh, and if you're looking into Hypergens or any of the other factions, you can just go to Raku Day's uh, uh, Reddit page dude i suck at reddit and you can browse through and you'll be able to find all the other ones here but i don't know what's happening with my internet australia you guys know how it is so let's jump into this one looking at the hypergene investment now we'll go through this stuff the purpose of this guide is to give an idea of how relevant and key investments uh investment is for each and every hero of the hypergene faction this includes signature items furniture as well as engravings collection is also newly added uh for the meta heroes uh we do have a little collections that doesn't just include hypergenes at the end so we'll take that a stargaze priority list is also included which is really cool i've seen a lot of different opinions on priority list for stargazing Honestly, I just do whatever you think feels best because uh, there's so many different opinions, but I do like Raku's one as well. But like I said, I can't put my finger on exactly what I think the perfect uh, stargazing priority is. Uh, since investment is meaningless without context, the relative strength of the hero is also included. Uh, kit strength plus investment relevancy. I love the way Rack has done these. Uh, this aims to give players suggestions as to where they should spend their resources. Uh Okay, once again, only in my opinion, if you get any feedback, cool beans. All right, let's jump into it. So this is what I love. I, I love these things because I, I'm, I'm a massive fan of just well visually represented guides. And if you guys watched the, the last one we did on this, this is probably like three to six months ago where we went through the other factions. I feel like these are some of the best presented guides that there are because if you're a basic person like myself, you can just go, okay, what's the relative strength of the character? Average. Mm, but are there any good investments? E60 is good. But even though E60 is good, it's an average character. So I probably don't want to invest that. I love how quick and easy it is visually to look at this. Then, and that's Awakeners is. Like, let's face it. Awakeners is just have one copy. Use it to interrupt. That's pretty much all you need. But then you've got the whole write-up about the hero summary, signature item, furniture, and engraving. So I definitely think it's worth you guys bouncing over here and just going deeper if you're trying, if you're like looking to invest into a character and you're like, okay, why am I investing this into it? This is a fantastic thing for it. So then we move on to Kandis and Rook. Once again, very good character with good, very good, good, very good, good, very good. Not too bad. Now, um, and then and then the other thing is here, we've got uh, the good and then I love these little uh, additional notes, which is hard to see here. Let's zoom in. My eyes are shot. I had to move my head closer. But you can see at E33 is very good uh, if you if you spec it into the insight. So the like even like the little fine tuning is included in this stuff. Uh, this is good, but you don't really need much investment. So that's cool beans. Um, and then once again, it goes through all of them. It goes through all of them, which I think is fantastic. And then we get to our first top tier, which is Lava Tune. Absolutely fantastic. And then this is what you're looking for for your investments. We've got a top tier signature item, top tier engraving. Fantastic unit all around. Dude looks like an absolute savage as well, which I love. And that's pretty much what you're looking at. Uh, you can see with Leofric, you ain't investing anything into this guy. Then we've got another top tier tier with lucilla fantastic and the great thing about lucilla is uh you know we do have that top tier three in uh engraving which is fantastic nine on her is good but i always like it when characters have like the best investment one at a lower investment grade so you can focus on those other units because this is only one faction remember we got other factions to look at so i do appreciate this and i love this type of stuff now lucretia being downgraded into the average tier just the lack of usage lately uh has really been hurting uh lucretia over the last like year she's just been slowly grinding down um then we look at something like mihira which is fantastic because let's face it you can make mihira work at an elite copy so it doesn't really matter you can go ahead and get an elite copy of her and you can just use her in that sense mezoth when he came out he was such a tanky thing and took so many hits but now he just gets one shot anyway uh mortis obviously for bosses getting a mythic mortis is always perfectly fine as you can see bad very bad very bad 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 just get him to 20 signature item at uh, at mythic and you're pretty much happy happy days if you want to use him and then we go through there valoris i was okay someone asked me in the comments was valoris ever relevant like i remember when she came out and then i don't remember anything else of her kind of similar to zikis 
Zikus was really cool because his design is wicked, but I feel like he never had much relevance either. Uh, but then we go to Zorath. Zorath is still a cool tech unit as well. Uh, really good for cheesing certain stages. Really good tech support unit uh, in general with that furniture. Um, I, I think he's just fantastic for slow entries, but it just 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 all around sick unit still for me in my opinion. But he's got his specific use and he's not as broadly exact like uh, useful as the others. Uh, then we have Eugene. So let's talk a little bit about Eugene as well. Now that we're here, let's so let's go into Eugene. Now, the main things that we need to know for this guy is that you can get up to 60 shards per month. You can get one copy of him per month. You need those two copies at the moment, uh, those 12 copies at the moment. We get, we get two free copies. I'm hoping they give us more free copies because this this write-up says it perfectly on this character. Uh, let me move down a little bit more. Uh, 15 shards can be bought per day from the guild shop for 60 per month, uh, which equates to one copy per month since 12 copies are needed for ascension, 14 uh, for engravings, uh, and we get two free copies. This means that 10 months or 12, if you want to get engravings, are needed for ascension, ascension slash engraving. If Eugene isn't obtainable through any other means... Uh, or event, uh, this would equal yada 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 guild coins, a shit ton basically, uh, in total for 10 copies. If dimensional exchange, and this is something else that's big to consider, happens during the span, it might not be hard for players to hoard enough resources to do both. Uh, three or four, uh, to be confirmed, additional copies will presumably be obtainable uh, at the end of the year through various events. So that's, that's a big note. That's something we're waiting on full confirmation for, which would be a big help. Uh, if we get four more copies, which means we only need to get six copies through exchange through six months. I feel like that's not too bad, but I'd also love to see a way to get more. And I'm also hoping that they don't, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about this. Do you guys like this? I mean, it's kind of nice for free to play because it's like a free one you can work towards, uh, but the dimensional exchange is going to be an issue with it um, unless they adjust the dimensional exchange or adjust something to make it easier. But I mean, free to play aren't getting every character. I, I feel like this maybe hurts whales more because they can't get the advantage. They like slowed down to the same pace as everyone else. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if they introduced packs where you can buy copies of him, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but let me know what you guys thought. Think, your guys' thoughts on Eugene. Uh, I'm sort of. I feel like some people are going to be like happy with it, and some people are going to be upset with it. So I don't know. You guys, let me know your thoughts. Now, this is Raku Day's. Uh, early impressions of uh, collections uh, and you can see this one once again this is very visually well rounded out and once again this does not include only hypergenes this is just some of the top top tier units and you can see like literally you want to look at some of these top tier characters you got the description over there but literally you just look at it you go okay which one do I want okay plus plus one or plus two we're good we get full attack attack erosion like I, I, I don't need to explain this because you can just look here and go okay that's what I need happy days Sweet. And then the good thing about this is looking at the investment you need, like it's so hard to get those plus threes, but you can probably get some better stats on a plus zero. So some of these characters that are cool with a plus zero, you can try and stack the better stats on it, uh, which is also something that's pretty handy. So that is that. And then we have these stargazing priorities. Now, once again, this is a pretty stacked uh, little, little visual guide that we've got here. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, but basically, once you can see initial, uh, get Shakira, get one star uh, on, on the worst sibling, get an elite copy of the better sibling. <laughs> Dude, I was so shadowed. Why couldn't... She's got a massive scythe. Why couldn't she have been the main damage dealer one? Dude, it just triggers me beyond belief. Uh, then we go ahead and get uh, Shakira up to a one star. Once again, you can follow this through. I, I really do like that Lava Tune is seeing so much usage. I think that's fantastic. Now, the... Um, the Ulna one is still up for debate. I've heard some people that say Ulna doesn't even fall into it anymore. I've seen different opinions around the track, but you know, I, I personally, I, I, I still really like Chad. I th feel like I would probably do Chad before Ulna. Uh, that is me personally, but uh, once again, I, maybe it's because he's a Chad and I absolutely love the dude and I think he's wicked. Uh, but that's sort of the priorities that you're looking at. Once again, here, Damia uh, already provides so much to a fresh account that getting an early copy can be quite the difference. And then we go into here as well, the shop units 
Spirits and stuff like that that you can get. Mentioning that with both Mahira and Twins, you can also summon for a copy of them early if you want because they do give you a good decent bit of advantage. Then we've got Challenger Coins, obviously, that we are going to look for exchanging characters for. So... That pretty much covers it. Let's see, advanced slash situational units. Okay, then we can talk about that. Uh, not worth summoning for. Dude, Audrey really made me sad. I Like, I loved Audrey. I maxed her because I, I just like characters with bows. And when it's like a, a constellation type bow, it's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, those are fair statements anyway. Those are the ones you're not bothered about. But that is a look at the Raku Day Guide. Once again, go in here, take a look at it, leave a like, go deeper into the characters you want to for descriptions and stuff like that. I think this stuff is absolutely fantastic. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day. I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.